Ladies and gentlemen, I'm thankful to the people that thought about me and sent me this story. There is a missing child. We need your help. If you guys are familiar with this area or familiar with this story, then the best thing that you guys can do is share the story, hit the thumbs up, copy the link, paste it out there, share it on your social media, whatever it is that you guys need to do. I'm just one person among many trying to help with this particular story. And even if we just only bring a couple of views to the story, I think it is still helpful. But I'm going to warn you guys, I have an opinion. Most people are not here to hear the news. They are here to hear my opinion about the news and I'm going to say some things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities, especially if you're not used to my commentary, okay? But I think what I say is out of love and out of respect, but that is your disclaimer if you need to exit the video, all right? This is a beautiful baby boy and what this boy was put through is absolutely senseless, okay? Now, on the surface, in my personal humble opinion, the story is, is that the mother's SUV was taken, was stolen. She was jacked for her vehicle with her son in it. But I'm going to tell you guys a story and then I'll give you my opinion if you want to stick around and listen. It took maybe 30 seconds, 30 seconds for the family of this little boy by the name of Blaze Barnett, and his name is spelled B-L-A-I-S-E, Blaze. He's one years old and it, and it took 30 seconds for the family that took their eyes off him as they were unloading groceries out of their vehicle on Wednesday morning and he was gone. So from what I understand, this SUV was in their driveway. So listen at this story. In that time, in that 30 seconds, they say that somebody climbed into the driver's seat of their gray Ford Explorer and took off with the toddler, wearing only a diaper and a black shirt with blue dinosaurs still strapped into his car seat. An Amber Alert was issued for the child early Wednesday and for 10 hours, police had no leads in this case. Now you guys know, whenever there is an Amber Alert, it has to meet certain criteria. Not every missing child gets to have an Amber Alert out for them because just like with anything, there has to be certain criteria. And then the police are able to put that out there. Criteria is good because that means it's a proven system. So why would we get mad at a system that works? They were able to qualify this as an Amber Alert for a missing child. Shortly before noon, a tipster followed a hunch and located the stolen SUV a few miles away. A few miles away. A few miles away. A few miles away. No, you know your YouTube is not skipping. I did say it three times. They found the SUV a few miles away. Not a few hours away. Not a few states away. Not a few countries, a few miles away. That don't even sound like that's a few neighborhoods away. Hello? But the baby boy Blaze, they found the SUV, but did not find the kid. Two yellow flags. Actually, those are two red flags. We're going to call red flags on the play. Two red flags. First of all, it was a few miles away. Second of all, the child was missing. We'll get to that picture here in a moment. I want y'all to look at that picture. We'll get to it here in a moment. For now, pay it no mind. Blaze was not inside the vehicle. Clarkston police officials confirmed Clarkston police officials confirmed in a news conference Wednesday afternoon, and I'm getting this from AJC.com. The Ford Explorer, which had paper tags, was obscured by bushes at a vacant Brandon Hills condominiums complex, along with Memorial College Avenue, police said, along Memorial College, College Avenue. It was told from the scene by record and Clarkston police later confirmed that the child's car seat and blanket were still inside. 
James Dent told Channel Action 2 News that he first spotted a man walking in the area, which drew his attention to the stolen vehicle. Dent said he tried to approach the man, but he ran off shouting. Clarkson police found the man and questioned him, but released him a short time later. So they didn't have anything to go on at that moment. I just kept saying, this is a dream. This just can't be real. According to Xavier Barnett, who told the news from outside his Clarkson apartment, as the search for his son continued into Wednesday night. So I guess that's the biological father, Xavier Barnett. I just broke down. Please bring him home. The car don't even matter. Just bring my son home. Blaze was a report. Blaze Barnett was reported missing at 1 a.m. Blaze Barnett was reported missing at 1 a.m. from Park 1000 Apartments at 1000 Montreal Road. 1 a.m. Bookmark that. We'll come back to it. According to a police report, Blaze's parents were running bags of groceries to their apartment and returned to the parking lot to find their vehicle and their son gone. His father told police he carried his three-year-old nephew inside first and was coming back for the toddler. He was in there for probably 30 seconds, maybe, and within those 30 seconds, he came back outside and the car was gone with Blaze in it. Deanna Bray, the child's mother, told the news AJC. Can y'all get y'all flags ready? If you feel like there's a... Do y'all feel like there's a flag on the play? Get your flags ready. Get your red flags ready. Because I think there's some flags on the play. We're going to talk about all of that, including the time frame. And if you guys are listening, do me a favor and please click that thumbs up. All it does is it shows this, shares this video, shares the story so more people can join in for people who are already subscribed. If y'all would do that, that would be awesome. Right? Does this normally happen? Yes. Do people go to the store, come home, get their kids out kind of one at a time from the grocery store? Yes, it does happen. But we'll get back to that here in a moment. Yes, this sounds like it could have been an accident, but we'll get back to that. The vehicle was not left running, but its keys were in the cup holder, according to the report. Blaze was strapped into the black and tan... I'm sorry, y'all. I can't do this. I can't do this. They specifically said the keys were in the cup holder. That's very specific. Hmm. Is it possible that the keys were not attached all together because for me i have all of my keys attached all to the key ring key fob and in this case since this is a and i don't think they mentioned this but this is a 2002 ford explorer so that probably means they use the keys to it i don't know if it actually has an alarm key i'm not sure so if you have a regular key you got because even like with the 05 explorers you still got to stick the key in it turn it to start it so unless you had your house keys and car keys separated you guys do you guys understand why i'm getting confused hmm and they said the vehicle was not running no it's not push to start i'm telling y'all that right now i have an explorer <laughs> i'll just tell y'all what i got i ain't gonna i have an explorer i don't think that's such a big deal i'll tell you i have an explorer so i know better okay it makes it even worse the fact that this vehicle was not running it'd be one thing that a person might jump in a vehicle if it was running i think it makes it worse because Normally, if you have your keys, your keys are attached, you would have went to the apartment or, or the house, unlocked the door, you would have had your keys on you, 
Like, why would you take your keys to the door, unlock it, and then take your keys back to the car and leave your keys in the car? <sighs> Let's continue. Blaze was strapped in the back in a uh, into the black and tan car seat with the blanket was wrapped around his legs, according to police. The GBI issued an, amp, uh, an alert known as a Levi's call in Georgia on behalf of the Clarkson Police Department on Wednesday morning. Barnett and Bray families and their family and friends searched for Blaze all morning and afternoon alongside police officers going door to door, speaking with neighbors in the area. Clarkston officials said they plan to hold a vigil Wednesday night. What? Why would they hold a vigil? What? This story, I don't know exactly when this story came out. This story came out. What, a day? A day or two ago? I don't know. I don't know exactly when this story came out. I don't see it right here. It says it was updated six hours ago. But when would the, when did this story first come out? I don't know. Don't y'all think that seems a little strange and a little bit early to hold a vigil? Not a visual like people like to mispronounce it. A vigil. Don't you think it's a little bit early in the search efforts to plan a vigil? I'm just asking a question. That seems odd to me. Everything about this seems odd to me. The Explorer had paper tags on it as well. That's also a yellow flag. We'll get to that here in a moment about that. Oh man, let's keep going. The case is reminiscent of the abduction of one-year-old Royalty Grisby in DeKalb County earlier this year. Grisby was kidnapped when her mother's car was stolen in March and was considered missing for more than 12 hours. The girl was found when a passerby heard her crying on the porch of a home in Lithonia and contacted police. A 14-year-old was arrested and charged in the abduction and police have not ruled out the possibility of a second suspect. The Clarkson police said that they have devoted all their resources to Wednesday's case, including patrol officers and detectives. Uh, let me see. Detectives Christine, Chief Christine Hudson said, the Cal County police, the GBI and FBI are also looking for Blaze. This is now a nationwide search. Waiting was the hardest part, according to the mom, not knowing the waiting. Anybody who spots the child is asked to call the Clarkston police at 404-557-8956 or just call 911. That's pretty easy to do. There is so much wrong with this story. Let me throw out a couple of things. First and foremost, do people go shopping at the grocery store at one o'clock in the morning? Yes, it does happen. But here's what I would like to know from the mom and from the dad. Which grocery store did y'all go to? These are questions y'all can, if y'all know them in that area, go ask them or tell the police to go ask. Which grocery store were y'all at? Then they can verify it on surveillance camera if they were at that grocery store. That's pretty easy to do. So if you got the FBI and the police involved, you need to follow every single piece of detail about this story because we believe that babies' lives matter, right? And if they do, then we need to be thorough. Check the grocery store cameras. Make sure that the baby was there. Simple, right? All grocery stores have cameras. Second of all, which grocery store did you go to? Why does that matter? Because since the pandemic last year, most Walmarts nationwide now close at 11 o'clock. Some of them at 10 p.m. Hello? Let me say that again. The type of grocery store matters. So there's really only going to be things like your, your Kroger, your Crest, your Walmart, maybe your, your, uh, your, um, what do they call that? 
market market streets in, in some places. There's a certain handful of grocery stores that are going to be like your bigger grocery stores that stay open late. Most places since the pandemic do not stay open late. You guys catch that? So since the pandemic, especially Walmart in most places closes at 11 o'clock. Why does that matter? Because Walmart will come up to you if you're still inside their store at 1050 nine or 1040 uh 10:45 and come walking up to you and they'll tell you uh sir you need to make sure and make your way to the front we're getting ready to close they will track everybody down inside that store and have them out of that store by 11 on the dot right why does that matter because there are very, 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 very few stores that are open 24 hours, which means that you would have the time from 11, 12, 1. That's three hours. That's a three hour gap. And I'm sure that they didn't live three hours away from the grocery store that they went to. Huh? This is stuff the news is not going to tell you. You're not going to get this from anywhere except for DJ Just J. Right? So unless they went to a 24 hour grocery store, which it is possible that they might've went to, I'm just saying that drastically closes the likelihood that maybe they didn't. I'm just throwing it out there as a guess. We're just trying to find the baby. That's all we're trying to do, okay? Second thing, here's, here's another thing that you gotta think about. These people or this person wanted to steal an SUV. First of all, you have a mother and a father, a biological mother and a biological father involved in this situation. Don't y'all think that's very risky to a thief? To walk up on a mother and a father? That's taking a very big chance. You're talking about it took less than 30 seconds for him to steal your vehicle. Is it possible? Yes. I would have said it would have definitely been possible if the car was still running. 30 seconds, yes. Car not running, not likely. Why? Because you'd have to find the keys. You would get lucky and see that the keys are in the cup holder, start the vehicle, somebody between the mom and the dad coming in and out, in and out of that house, at some point would have heard their vehicle start they would have had to put the vehicle in reverse. Then they would have had to put the vehicle in drive to go forward and dip. At some point, don't you think you would have heard it? They would have tried to smash off. You would have heard something. You would have been able to run out there and at least see their face, right? Maybe not stop them, but you would have seen them pulling off or starting up your vehicle. Yes. And again, I throw out the fact that it's very weird with a 2002 Ford Explorer, it, whatever ex year it was, it could be a different year, but 05 and back, all Explorers are started by a key. Keys are usually on your key ring. Why would you take your car key off of your house key ring or collective of keys? Leave that in the car and then open the door with what, another key? Just throwing it out there that that's a little bit odd. And I just noticed only a couple of people in my chat looked at this picture of this baby boy. Did y'all notice the picture on my screen, y'all? Who was able to look at my screen and see that there might be something wrong here? How many of you guys got a keen sense of awareness? How many of y'all got a sixth sense about things when you could just, your spider senses get the tingling? Yes. Ooh, tingling. And you realize when you hear this story, there's so much about this that does not seem right. Look at this picture. Look at this picture of this baby boy. Do y'all not see something wrong here? Huh? Let me go back to my other point. Stealing an SUV. Most people will steal. Why do most people steal cars? Why do most people steal cars? 
Most people steal cars because they want what? They want the car. They want the vehicle. They want something either on the vehicle or the entire vehicle itself. Some people used to steal rims. Some people used to steal radios. Some people just steal your whole damn car. Maybe take it to the chop shop. Maybe just think that they'll get away with just taking and keeping your whole damn car. Huh? I want y'all to think about this. Where did they find the car? We ain't even got to the news videos yet. Where did they find the car? They said a few miles away. A few miles away. Step into the thieving mind just for a second, please. And think about this. You stole a car to get the car. Maybe you didn't know that the baby was in there and you're just like, oh crap, what do I do? You dump the car, right? You're just like, no, I don't, I don't want nothing to do with this, right? You dump the car, leave the baby where it's at and you dip, you run, you get away clean, right? But I want y'all to think about this. They found the car a few miles away, but what was not there? The baby was gone. Is it possible that somebody would have tried to have an intention of stealing a vehicle and possibly take the child on top of that? Is that possible? Yes, it does happen. It has happened. But what's the likelihood of a criminal stealing a car, had no idea that the vehicle was there with the car, with the, with the baby inside of it, unless that person knew that the baby was inside of there, which means they would have had to been told that the baby was inside there because they didn't have enough time to sit there and scope the situation, right? Especially when mom and dad came out and they say it, we were only in the house no longer than 30 seconds. There is no way you would have been able to make an assessment about stealing a car and then be like, oh shit, there's a baby right there. I'm not taking this car or I see the baby there. I'm gonna take the car anyway, get rid of the baby. I'm gonna keep the car. But guess what they didn't do? They didn't keep the car. But guess what they did take? They took the baby. Why would you take the baby if you came for the car? Woo. Damn, it's getting hot in here. Do y'all need me to repeat myself? <laughs> I don't think you do. But I'm gonna drink my detox water because it makes my body feel real, real nice. Real, real nice. I don't think any of y'all need to for me to repeat what I just said. The thieving scenario makes no sense. Why your house? Why your vehicle? Let me point something else out. Let me point something else out. They would have had to gotten very lucky to try to steal a car that just happened to have the keys in the cup holder, which makes no sense if you've already opened up the door, which means you should have had your keys on you or in the house or in the door. It would have made more sense if you would have said he snatched the keys out of the door, then hopped in the vehicle and took my vehicle, but not leaving your keys in the cup holder. Logically, that makes no sense. And on top of that, the key question you would have to ask is why would the criminal risk life in prison? I'm going to say that again. Why would you risk life in prison by stealing a child after you might have only risked two to five years in jail for a stolen car, depending on how many warrants you have? or how many pending cases you have. One to two years, maybe two to five, compared to potentially life in prison by stealing an entire human being. Somebody please tell me where's the logic in that. 
even a crackhead would realize this is not a this is not a, a correct exchange. So I came for a car, but I'm gonna take the baby and dump the car instead. What? What? And then on top of that, why would you, if y'all are working together in tandem as a team, like y'all said y'all was, as parents, why would you go out of your way to bring one child in and not the other? Matter of fact, if this baby was the youngest, don't you think you should get the youngest baby out of the car first? Or am I just stupid? If I were a box of crayons, maybe I'd be like a brown color or a navy blue because I'm not the brightest crayon in the box. If I were a bottle of molasses, I might be a little bit slow. But even logically, I'm thinking about it. You would go get your smallest child first, which was this baby. Yes. I guess we're going to ignore this picture because this was a picture of this baby before he was stolen. I'm going to point something out and I'm going to break out my trusty whiteboard before I show you guys the news videos, if that's okay. For some people who might not have noticed this. This baby has bruises. Here. Here. Here, a huge one. Here, his mouth is swollen because I saw his other pictures. His mouth is swollen and a bruise here. Here's what I want you guys to do. I want y'all to do some homework when y'all leave my channel. What I want you guys to do is I want y'all to go and look up there is um, there is F, there is an FBI video that actually explains to you guys how you can actually tell if a child has been abused at home, if a child is suffering from child abuse, if it's being hit, physically handled. There are ways that you can tell, and I think they said some of the biggest ways that you can tell is if children have bruising below the eyes, forehead, chin, behind the ears, and neck. which clearly he has marks all over him. So I'm sure what what are they going what are the parents going to tell me? Oh, he was a clumsy kid. He he fell out of the, uh, out of the bed. He fell on his own. He's a clumsy kid. He fell while he was in the bathtub. I'm sure we're going to have another bathtub story, right? That's how he got all that bruising. He fell in the bathtub with all his clothes on, right? I bring that up because that's what happens in every damn story we do. Somehow there's always a abused or dead kid and a bathtub. I have no idea how those things go together. Y'all say there's one up here as well. Look at all of those bruises. And I want you guys to remember this is before the child was stolen. Am I pointing some fingers at the family? Well, let me tell you guys this. I've always told you guys where there's smoke, there's usually fire. And I point the finger at the parents because that's where you need to start looking. I always tell you guys when these children go missing, look in the family circle first and then look outward because you'll find in a lot of situations that you might have a lot of evidence before you even start to expand your search. So to the FBI and to the police, that is my personal humble opinion that you should investigate the people who call the police and investigators, investigate them first. Let me give you guys the fair usage and then I will give you guys a little bit more about my opinion and I'm gonna show you guys another strange interview by the mom and I want y'all to hear what she got to say, let's go. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Matter of fact, to the people who are listening before I play this news video, I want y'all to tell me 
how good am I at what I do? I have not been wrong yet, even though sometimes I put out some accusations and they seem kind of far fetched. Y'all remember, like I started to blame the mother who's, who who um, lost her five children in that house fire. I pointed the finger at her a year before the police even put out an arrest warrant for her. I did it a year. Y'all let me know if there is anybody else out there talking about how this mother might need to be looked at or this dad might need to be investigated. Tell me if y'all have seen any other YouTubers bring these things up, especially all of those bruises on that baby's face. Don't worry, I'll wait. Let's go. An Amber Alert has been issued for one-year-old Blaze Barnett. This is a picture of the little boy. Police say he was inside of an SUV that was stolen from in front of his home around 1 a.m. Good days, Brooke Zahner just spoke with the boy's family. She joins us live in Clarkson. And Brooke, I can only imagine the heartbreak and, and everything else that they're going through right now. Elise, really, I mean, just utter shock. You can imagine you go inside the home for 30 seconds, you come back out, and then the, the car and your child is gone. And that's what happened here. We're told from the family that they came home to their uh, I promise you guys, once y'all have watched the AFC long enough, the AFC podcast, you will never watch any news videos the same ever again in your life. That I can promise you. You will never see another story like this, and it'll just... It'll just float by. You will you will start to notice things that are very, very glaring examples of things that just are not right. Things are out of place. Apartment home here at the Park Apartments on Montreal Road in Clarkston. They parked the car. They were loading some groceries into the home. They brought their nephew into the home. They were in the house for 30 seconds. When they came back, they realized that the car and one-year-old Blaze were gone. So we do want to show you a picture of one-year-old Blaze as well as that vehicle that was stolen. So take a good look at your screen here. This is one-year-old Blaze. Uh, we're told that he was wearing a black shirt at the time when he was abducted with blue dinosaurs printed on it. That car, we're told, is a 2002 Ford Explorer gray or silver in color, and it has a temporary tag with the number P2722946. So that For anybody who comes into the comment section, um, after we finish this live stream, if they leave a comment and they say, well, hey, such and such talked about that also, I'm telling you guys, there is zero people from this moment and prior that have brought up the grocery store theme. Nobody has brought up that grocery store thing and say it, figure out what grocery store it was and check the surveillance tape, see if those people were there. If there was indeed a grocery store that was open late, there were there were security cameras that would approve that you were there. That is the vehicle uh, that they're looking for, and they believe that Blaze is still in the vehicle. They, the family tells us that Blaze was actually asleep when all of this was happening. So uh, just some truly terrifying moments here. Uh, they are desperate for answers, and we spoke to the family, as you mentioned earlier. We talked to the mom as well as Blaze's great aunt, and she says if the kidnapper would just turn uh, Blaze over, they would not press any charges. He's, uh, he loves his mom. Uh, we can't even hold him without him or his mom. So we would really like for everyone to be on the lookout for my nephew. He's lovable. He's probably crying right now because he doesn't have his mom. He loves his mom. Uh, we can't even hold him without him or his mom. So we would really like for everyone to be on the lookout for my nephew. He's lovable. He's probably crying right now because he doesn't have his mom. <sighs> he loves his mom. Uh, we can't even hold him without him or his mom. Look, y'all have been watching me way too long. Some of y'all already know what I'm getting ready to say. Let me know if y'all are ready for me to say it. Hit that thumbs up if you're ready for me to say it. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, man. I'm going to hell after this one. Blaze over. They would not press any charges. He's uh, He loves his mom. Uh, we can't even hold him. 
without him or his mom. So we would really like for everyone to be on the lookout for my nephew. He's lovable. He's probably crying right now. Let me address the first thing I know that people are going to say. First and foremost, this lady doesn't have anything to do with the disappearance of this boy. I hope. I hope. Okay. I'm not going to rule nothing out. But I'm going to just tell you guys, if I see somebody do an interview and sometimes I tend to say things that are not going to sit well with your sensibilities. But I'm sorry, but this woman... With these lips that look like she literally just ate some blue bubble gum icy from the freaking, uh, from the icy stand. And these big bugged out eyes, like, like I can't even make my eyes that big. She just looks a little bit odd, does she not? Right there, look at this. Look at this. This is the auntie. Why am I bringing this up? Because I think something is wrong with y'all family. That's why. Blaze over. They would not press any charges. And they said they don't want to. Oh, oh, hold on. I almost forgot about that part. Y'all, please click the thumbs up. Click the thumbs up. Click the thumbs up. We need as many thumbs up as people who are watching. So that means we're not right where we need to be. So if y'all can just stop for a moment. Click the thumbs up. More people will show up. I promise. Okay. They just say it. They don't want to press charges. Why in the F word? Why in the F word would you not press charges? Why would you not? A sto you, they stole your baby in your car and you don't want no, you don't want no charges? Like you little scrappy, you don't want no problems? What? Is that not, is that not a problem? Why would you not, why would you not want them to press charges? The freaking FBI is involved. Why would you not, why not want to press charges? So you're going to make the FBI and the police and all of these agencies do all of this work to find your kid, but you don't want nobody to pay the cost for that. Really? Oh my God. Oh my God. But anyway, let's go back to blue lips. Let's go back to the Smurf. Let's go back. He's, uh, he loves his mom. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at her eyeballs. It's like soon as she come on, she ready, boy. She is, she can see stuff around the corner with them eyeballs. Look at this. Blaze over. They would not press any charges. He's, uh, he loves his mom. I'm trying to catch it right when she does it. Hold on. This is great. And, Hold and on. She I says, can do it. Hold on. If the Here kidnapper would just turn a, a blaze over, they would not press any charges. He's, uh, uh, he loves his that right there. <laughs> that look right there. <laughs> Why does your eyes look like that, ma'am? I'm sorry. But how much attention do you need to be paying right now? I'm sorry. This woman looked like she's trying to see this man's future. Look, this woman's eyes look like she's trying to see the future lottery numbers or something. <laughs> this woman looked like she sucks on crack popsicles. Oh my Lord. I am going to hell for that one. I am so sorry. Oh my goodness. Crack popsicles. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> this woman don't deserve that. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I apologize, y'all. I apologize. Let's keep going. <laughs> Let's keep going. His mom. Uh, we can't even hold without him or his mom. So we would really like for everyone to be on the lookout for my nephew, he's lovable. He's probably crying right now because he doesn't have his mom. So to the young man, I know we make mistakes out here. Have some compassion in your heart. Trust God to drop my nephew out safe and we will not press charges against you. 
So at this time, the investigation obviously well underway. We're told that the family has actually uh, done some searching of their own. They also say uh, police have obviously been on the ground so far uh, from police. We have not gotten any leads or heard anything or uh, any sightings of that vehicle. But of course, as soon as we have that information for you or any updates about this story, we're going to pass it to you on air and online at fox5atlanta.com. That's the latest here in Clarkston. I'm Brooks Honor for Good Day Atlanta. With breaking news. The search is on tonight for a missing toddler last seen inside of an SUV that was stolen in Clarkston. One year old Blaze Barnett disappeared about 16 hours ago, triggering an Amber Alert. The stolen vehicle found abandoned at a condo complex just before noon, but there was no sign of Blaze. His parents desperate to find him tonight. <laughs> John Shear joined us live in Clarkston as the search continues for the little boy. John, do police have any leads here? As of late this afternoon, no leads yet. This has been all over the news, all over social media since dawn. And so far, Clarkston police have not received any tips at all about where Blaze Barnett is. One year old. Police don't know if he was left alone somewhere or if someone has him. Once they found the family's SUV abandoned near the family's apartment without Blaze inside, they took the SUV to the GBI crime lab for processing to try to lift some prints. Blaze's mother and great aunt pleading for his safe return. His mother, Deanna Bray, in tears, saying Blaze had just taken his first steps. Blaze is one of a kind. He loves his mom. He's lovable. He's probably crying right now because he doesn't have his mom. Have some compassion in your heart. Drop my nephew out safe. Police think that the person who drove away in the family's SUV did not know at first that Blaze was in the back seat, in his car seat, and then they don't know what happened then when that person ditched the SUV. Did that person abandon Blaze somewhere, or now does someone happen, have him? They're hoping that anyone who has any information at all will call Clarkston Police or 911. Yes, please keep your eyes open tonight, folks. John, thank you. What happened this morning? Um, so around maybe like 110, we got back home. Um, okay, this is the biological mother. Here's where the rubber meets the road. I want you guys to listen. I'm going to play it all the way through. I want you to listen to her tell the story and y'all tell me if y'all believe the mom's story. Straight up and down. Forget everything that I said. Listen to her story and tell me what you think. Here we go. Biological mother. What happened this morning? Um, so around maybe like 1.10, we got back home. Um, we parked right here where the um, white Kia is, uh, but we faced the car this way. Um, Blaze's dad went to go drop off his, our nephew and like some gross, I mean some bags that we had and stuff like that. Um, he was in there for probably like 30 seconds maybe and, and within those 30 seconds he came back outside and the car was gone with Blaze in it. What was going through your head? Um, I really couldn't think at that time, at that moment. I, I just, everything just shut down, like my whole mind just shut down. Um, at this point when we came outside together and seen like that the car was really gone, at that point I'm just like, where could he be? Like, where, you know? What, um, what was going through your mind? I was shocked. I was worried. I, I thought it was a dream. I just kept saying it's a dream. It just can't be real. And it just broke down. You might, have, you might have seen similar things like this on the news before. Uh, did you ever think that something like this could happen to y'all? No, sir. Not at all. I mean, it's just, it's just a routine putting away groceries and uh, something like this just comes out of nowhere for you. Yes. What, uh, if you could say something right now to the person who has your your child, what would you say? Just please bring him home. You can keep, the, the car don't even matter, just bring my son home. And how about you? What, what, what message do you have for... Yeah. Um, just bring my baby back 
safely unharmed um, just bring him back you know we don't want to press no charges we just want him back like he said you guys watch this interview y'all looked into the look at his eyes now I'm not saying you gotta be crying and boohooing but I want y'all to notice this is this is the year ever since the pandemic started we have had a ton of parents white parents black parents Mexican parents all kind of parents that have done these interviews and come to find out they ended up getting charged for the crimes after they did their interviews. I'm not saying that that's them, but what I am saying is that they don't look concerned. Thank you. That's the word I'm looking for. Concern. Where is the concern in his eyes, in his tone of voice? Where is the concern in her eyes and her tone of voice? Do I have this wrong? That's what I'm asking you guys. Is there something I'm missing? They seem very, well, matter of fact about it. Well, he's missing. The car don't even matter. Just bring our son back. And we're not going to press any charges. And just bring our son back. Thank you. Nonchalant. They are acting like, they are acting like somebody stole their puppy. Not their pride and joy, their baby. They don't even, like, I know people that act more distraught. I've actually watched people cry when they lose their animals, when they lose their pets. They don't even act like that. They act like somebody came in their yard and and stole, stole something out of their flower bed or something. If you guys fi find, you know, our roses, yeah, they came in our, in our rose bed and clipped all of our roses. So if you guys could, please just, we won't even press any charges. We just want our roses back. Just return our roses and we're good. The dirt that you spilled and, and the fact that you ruined our roses, that doesn't even matter. We just want our roses back. Tell me any of you guys in the chat who have ever experienced somewhat somebody stealing something from you. Have you ever had your car broken into your house broken into? Has somebody ever come onto your lawn and stolen your lawnmower, stolen your bicycle, stolen your wallet? I've had people flip out. I've seen people flip out over people stealing their credit cards, let alone an entire human being. Hello, huh? I would probably be distraught if I found out somebody stole a gun of mine, let alone my entire freaking, a whole entire human being. Just nothing, huh? Okay, all right. U L C H E R. And what's the very latest right now? Um, as of today, approximately 10 30 a.m., with the help of the Cab County Police Department, we were able to locate the vehicle involved with the incident this morning that took place over at 1000 Montreal Road at Park 1000. Uh, the vehicle that was in question was a 2002 Ford Explorer, silver in color. Uh, it was located within Brandon Hills Condos, located off Memorial College Avenue. The vehicle was unoccupied at the time of, of locating the vehicle. Uh, blaze along with this car seat was missing from the vehicle. The vehicle has been taken to the GBI headquarters for processing of the evidence. A witness at the scene observed a male who later uh, was able to be located and interviewed. I remember a long time ago. <laughs> I remember a long time ago. I had somebody steal my contacts. This is when I first moved out of my mom and dad's house. I had some people over my house. Actually, it was my roommate at the time. Shout out to my roommate. You, you know, that's my boy. But he had some people come over and they went into my bedroom while I wasn't either when I wasn't there or I was doing something and they stole my contacts. I guess they didn't realize they were prescription, but they were colored contacts. I guess they this is back in the day when I guess those things were kind of valuable. 
to have your eyes different colors. <laughs> and I pitched a fit about one set of missing colored contacts. More than what these people are concerned about somebody stealing their entire human being. The our investigations, um, are located and interviewed by our investigations unit and later released. This is still a fluid and active investigation and our top priority is to locate the missing juvenile Blaze. Again, Blaze was last seen wearing a green tank top with dinosaur print and a blanket wrapped around the bottom half of his uh, body. It is the Clarkson's Police Department's top priority to find Blaze. And as of right now, we don't have anything further other than he is still missing. We do have the vehicle and it is currently at the GBI um, being processed. Are you running down any tips? We have not had any, any viable tips um, as of right now. Um, again, we, we encourage the public to reach out to us if they see Blaze or have any information of where Blaze is at. Normally in situations like this where someone steals an SUV and they, they discover that a baby's inside, they end up, you know, abandoning the baby, safely leaving it at, at a house or a, a hospital or whatever. In this case, the baby's been gone now for 12 hours. This has got to be some serious concern for you and the family and everyone involved. Yes. I'm going to pause it right there because they said exactly what I was thinking. Let me back this up like a U-Haul truck. And I want y'all to listen at this man's interview question. He said, usually when somebody steals a vehicle and they find out a baby is in it, they will abandon the baby. Right? Listen at his question again. Us, if they see Blaze or have any information of where Blaze is at. Normally in situations like this where someone steals an SUV and they, they discover that a baby's inside, they end up you know, abandoning the baby, safely leaving it at, at a house or a hospital or whatever in this case the baby's been gone now for 12 hours this has got to be some serious concern for you and the family and everyone involved yes it's very concerning with us um that is why it is our our top priority to locate this uh, juvenile can you, you say what it? took you to brandon hills uh we got a call uh by a uh, subject that located that had thought they seen the vehicle and the cab county police department uh, went around to that location they found the vehicle abandoned in the back of the uh, Complex. Did you find, well, I guess it's maybe too early to answer whether there was any um, evidence found in the car that was uh, useful? Not, not at this time. It's still being processed. It is still being processed, yeah. Is this all hands on deck for your police department? Right? Yes, everyone we have out right now uh, on the streets, campus in the area, as uh, well as uh, the help with the Cab County Police Department. Well, are you doing any active searches right now and where those searches taking place? Uh, Active searches, we, are, we have all of our patrol units. We have several of our CID units out. Um, we have the family, they've, they've uh, come together. Uh, they've gone door to door. Um, but as of right now, we do have active search for them. Did you, do you have any reason to believe that the child may have been uh, left in the area in that very rural, not rural, but a, that isolated, decrep, broken, broken down or that neighborhood uh, that's very isolated, maybe been put in the woods, I mean, if you searched out there, because the family and relatives have been out there searching. Okay, so we, we have looked around. Uh, that that is a possibility, uh, but we are in the process of searching at, at this time. Do you have any indication that Blaze is being held somewhere by someone? And if that were the case, what would you say to to those people? We don't have any indication at that time. Um, uh, just please return to juvenile um, safely. If you just want to call and say, "Hey, I've left the juvenile." Um, at a location, we'll come by, you know, just, we're, our top priority is a located juvenile. Are there any persons of interest in your investigation? And not at this time. Are you, uh, do you have any scheduled updates or? Uh, scheduled updates. As warranted? As, as warranted, as of right now, we don't have anything coming in. Um, that's why we're asking the public's help to help us locate uh, Blaze. Has there been any help for surveillance video? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure, um, as of right now, they have pulled some su uh, surveillance video. I don't think any of that has looked, uh, gave us a lead at this time. And again, I'll say this again. I think the videotape, the surveillance tape they need to be looking at should be from the grocery store that they claim to be at. Let's keep going. And you know what, Miss Wu, thank you for saying that. She said nobody wants a damn explorer. 
you kind of jumping the gun on me. You are 100% right. Thank you. Ain't nobody going to steal that. We'll get back to that here in a moment. Remind me as soon as this video was over and I'll talk about that. News at 630. The search is on for missing one year old boy from Clarkston. We've learned he was taken after the car he was in was stolen right in front of his home. Our Trace and Bragg is live at the scene right now speaking with family members. Trace and good morning. Good morning. I'll tell you the entire family is out here looking for blaze and as you said that car was stolen just steps away from the family's home i'm actually here i wish these interviewers would stop i know you're trying to protect yourself from from that stuff that's going around but stop doing interviews with your mask on i can't hear you dummy stop doing that yeah bring a grocery store receipt something come on man all i'm saying is just prove that you were there Prove you're at the grocery store. Prove the story that you gave us. If you gave us a story, just prove it. That's easy to do. With Blaze's mother, can you tell us your, your first and last name? Um, Deanna Bray. And Deanna, I can't imagine what you and your family must be going through right now. Uh, thanks for speaking to us. Can you tell us what took place? Take us through the moment. Um, I got back in front of my house right here we parked right here um maybe around like 106 110 um i went in the house first went upstairs blaze's dad um had grabbed our nephew out the car and um, a couple bags that we had um he just was making a quick trip you know to the house because it's, it's right there so the car we were able to still see the car um maybe 30 seconds he was in there he came you know tried to come back to, to get blaze and then blaze wasn't out here the car wasn't either the car, you said you guys could still see the car so much so that you could even see the person walking by, the teenager, as you're describing him, who you believe stole the vehicle. Tell us more about him. Um, yeah, so um, Blaze's dad seen the, the boy walking right here in front of like the bus stop or something right there. And, um, you know, he didn't think nothing of it. It's just a lot of kids walking around here. Sometimes they walk late and stuff like that. So he didn't think nothing of it. Um, but you know he just kind of put two and two together and knew like at the moment he's seen that boy and then now the car is gone so you know and you described him right about right around 16 years old probably yeah 15 16 years old um he had on like black pants um a black jacket with yellow and green squares um and black shoes what was blaze wearing blaze was wearing blue socks and he was wearing a um like a like a shirt that's like cut out like this like a tank and it's like um green uh some blue in there some gray and it has like designs on it like animals or something what in the world i'm gonna rewind this i'm gonna let this last part that she just said that she's giving the description of the criminal the suspect and now she's giving a description of her child i'm a, I'm, I'm not going to even say nothing i'm gonna just rewind it i'm gonna let y'all hear this again listen at her description of the suspect and then listen her, at her description of her own flesh and blood her child listen at this again listen 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 a um like a like a shirt that's like shoes seen that boy and then now the car is gone so from right here let me matter of fact let me see if i can bookmark can i bookmark this i can't but it's okay listen to this you know and you described him right about right around 16 years old probably yeah 15 16 years old um he had on like black pants um a black jacket with yellow and green squares. Listen to how much detail she's given. She gave the age. She knows all the colors, knows the shoes. Listen at her. Um, and black shoes. What was Blaze? She gave a perfect description. Now listen at how she describes her own child. Listen at this. Do y'all think her level of description is the same? Cause she gave a description of him. She didn't even blink. She's like, here's what he had on. Boom, 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 boom. Listen to how she describes her son. Blaze was wearing blue socks and he was wearing a, um, like a 
tank, like a shirt that's like cut out like this, like a tank, and it's like um, green, uh, some blue in there, some gray, and it has like designs on it, like animals or something. And this is obviously. I'm gonna tell y'all. This is why people say I should be a detective, because if I was in the FBI, I actually pay attention to stuff like this. I want y'all to look at her eyes. Look at her eyes when she talks about the criminal suspect, his description, how she has all the confidence. When you look somebody into the eyes like this, you are speaking. That means you have confidence. But when I get to talking about something and I'm, I'm looking down, I'm looking around and I'm looking around, that means you have no confidence, which means you should have confidence, which means you're probably not being 100% forthcoming, truthful. Notice, look at her eyes, listen at the description again. A black jacket with teen spine. He's seen that boy and then now the car is gone. So. Watch her eyes, watch her eyes. Here's the criminal description. Oh, so, you know. And you described him right about, right around 16 years old? Probably. Right here, look at her eyes, her eyes are looking straight forward. Yeah, 15, 16 years old. Um, he had on like black pants, um, a black jacket with yellow and green square. Her eyes are mostly forward. Watch. Um, and black shoes. Her eyes are mainly forward. Watch the flip side. This is body language. Thank you, Dre the Dream. Body language. Watch how her eyes change when she, <laughs> I'm just observant, that's all. I've had a lot of help along the way. I've watched FBI videos. Shout out to Tommy, cause Tommy has pointed out a lot of things that I pay attention to. I listen to Relationship Rehab. He's pointed out plenty of things. I, I'm just an observant person. I can learn information from anywhere. I, I, I'm like a sponge. Watch her confidence change and her eyes when she talks about her son, watch. What was Blaze wearing? Blaze was wearing blue. Eyes went down. Socks, and he was. Eyes went to the to the right. Wearing a um like a. Eyes went down. Like a shirt that's like cut out. Her whole face went down. Y'all see that? Like this, like a tank, and it's like um green. Uh, some blue in there, some gray, and it has like designs on it, like animals or something. Where are my mothers at? Any mothers want to raise their hand in the chat? How many mothers do we have in the chat? And if y'all are watching, please click the thumbs up. I know this is getting long, but this is super important because I've told you guys, in these missing children investigations, you usually don't have to look further than the people who reported it, the people who got the most to say, the people right in front of your face. All of these missing children, look at the people who are right there first. How many mothers do I have in the chat? How many women do I have in the chat? Y'all tell me that if somebody asks you what your child, your baby had on, Tell me what mother in the chat wouldn't be able to perfectly describe exactly what their child looks like, especially when you see that child every single day. You gave birth to that child. You dressed that child. You did that child's hair. You gave that child a bath. You fed that child. You nourished that child. You gave that child a bath. You mean to tell you bought the clothes from the store, did you not? Like how many mothers don't pay attention to what they dress their children in? Mothers are very, women in general are very particular. Hello, hello, where am I at ladies, huh? Where am I at with this? What mothers out there would not be able to describe to you the very threads that their children are wearing perfectly? Picture perfect. Listen to how she has no confidence explaining what her own child is wearing while she's looking all up off to the side and looking down talking about her own child in black shoes what was blaze wearing blaze was wearing blue socks 
and he was wearing a um like a like a shirt that's like cut out like this like a tank and it's like um green uh some blue in there some gray and it has like designs on it like animals or something and this is obviously it had animals or something unless you unless you're unless the child doesn't live with you how do you not know what your child is wearing Look, I'm going to tell y'all something I know about black people in general. My people, let me tell y'all something. One thing that I know about our people, for those who might not understand, is that black folks know everything. Matter of fact, black folks are the ones who can take a pair of shoes, look at your shoes, Look at the thread pattern. Look at where the eyelets are. Look at the shoelaces. Look at the bottom of the shoe. Look at the insides of the shoe and tell you, oh yeah, them shits is fake. They're not, they're not the real ones. Those are not the real Jordans. I can tell. I can tell. You see where the logo is? You see where that logo right, is right there? Jordan's foot is normally turned at a 90 degree angle and that foot is turned at a 120 degree angle. <laughs> We are the same people that will crack jokes because your belt ain't fly, because you your shirts ain't name brand. We can tell the difference between when you bought your store, when you bought your your shirt at the damn uh, at the damn mall compared to if you bought your stir your shirt at the grocery store. Hello, huh? Are we not the same people that we could tell whether you got your pants from Louis Vuitton or if you got your pants from Burlington Coat Factory? Hello? <laughs> and y'all don't laugh at my shoes. These are Asics. They're very comfortable. <laughs> and I like all black. Just saying. Just saying. Giving y'all a little insight about my black people. Just saying. But she didn't know nothing about the facts of her own son's clothes. It's such a difficult time for you and your entire family. Take us through the moments after finding out exactly what happened. You called your family, called 911, and tell us how you feel. Um, yeah, I called 911, called my family, and we all did like um, a search. Well, I, me and Ig Blaze's dad stayed here and just kept walking up and down this street. Um, the rest of my family, they went everywhere um, around. And I'm not clowning because I wear Burlington all day, every day. To look for him and stuff like that. And, and there's a very important message that you and your family have for whoever stole your vehicle. Uh, what, what is that? Are you guys going to press charges or what do you all want to say to that person? Um, no, we don't want to press charges. Um, we just want you to bring our baby back. That's all. Um, Sorry. Sorry, I know this is difficult. Um, if you have him still in the car, just keep him warm. You know, just bring him back. We don't want to press charges, anything. Like, I just want him back in my arms. That's all. Listen to what she said. Sorry, I know this is difficult. Um, if you have him still in the car, just keep him warm. You know, bring him back we don't want to press charges if you have my son keep him warm i wouldn't want you to keep my kid anything give me my damn kid back how about that how about we coming for you how about that we got them hammers ready to go, locked and loaded. We coming for our son, so you best to turn my son in. How about that? We just want you to keep him warm. If you still have him in the car, keep him warm. And whenever you're ready to give him back to us, we'll, we'll be here. We're not gonna press, we're not gonna press charges. What? She said, keep my son warm. And let me and let me tell y'all the God honest truth. Here's what I believe. I believe her son is not warm at all. Did y'all catch my drift? I believe her son is not warm 
at all. I think her son is cold as as far as no blood moving in his body. I want y'all to remember that picture that I showed you guys. If you ask my personal opinion, and you see all this bru all these bruises on this kid's face. Something tells me that this boy is not warm at all. Y'all catch that? Cold is in blue. Thank you. This is not going to be a positive outcome. This is going to be a recovery effort. Finding the body. I think this child was beaten to a pulp. Keep him warm. He ain't warm, ma'am, and you know he ain't warm. Warm? No. He had a thank you. Somebody said he had a tank top on, socks and a diaper. Come on now. What type of... Think about that. Thank you, Nadia. Nadia called that out. She said to her son, if it's that cold, that you need a coat and a hat outside. If it's that cold out there, then why did your son have on a tank top? I want y'all to notice... That she also said that her son didn't have a jacket. He didn't have pants on. But you're worried about him being warm? This is the cold season. Huh. All right, now this is different. Um, if you have him still in the car, just keep him warm. You know, spring him back. We don't want to press charges, anything. Like, I just want him back in my arms. That's all. And last question again, thanks so much for talking to us. A lot of times folks get those alerts, get those Amber alerts and they just ignore them. To folks in this community right now who have that Amber alert on their phone with all the information that they need to help find Blaze, what would you say to them? Please don't ignore it. Um, please stay well, be like, just stay alive today. Um, just please look out um, if you see anything please just contact us or somebody or something and describe your vehicle one last time um it's a 2002 ford explorer and it's uh silver gray right. yeah perfect well thank you so much for speaking to us she has what kind of vehicle contact us or somebody or something and describe your vehicle one last time um it's a 2002 ford explorer and it's uh silver gray right. yeah perfect well thank you so much Let's move on, man. Last video. This is Blaze. Um, Blaze is special. He's funny. Um, he don't go to nobody but me. <laughs> this is his grandma and his auntie and his other auntie, mm -hmm. and he don't go to nobody. Nobody. Like he cries. So cry baby. he's a so yeah, he big crying. cry baby. He's funny. His smile just like. Once he smiles, it just make you just light up the room. Like it just light up the room. So he's 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 a good. Y'all hear this? <laughs> this is Blaze. Um, Blaze is special. He's funny. Um, he don't go to nobody but me. <laughs> This is his grandma and his auntie and his other auntie mm -hmm. and he don't go to nobody. Nobody. Like he cries. So cry baby. he's a so yeah, he big crybaby. Cry he's funny, his smile just like once he smiles, it just make you just light up the room. Like it just a light up the room. So he's 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 a good Okay. Videos are over. How many people are ready for me to give my final commentary about this story because we still got more to talk about. We still got a lot more to talk about. If y'all would do me a favor, we're still short of our goal. We should have about 900 thumbs up. Can you guys please click the thumbs up? Yeah, somebody said she's not even crying. She never has. You don't know the color of your car? Thank you for saying that. Can y'all please click the thumbs up? 900 thumbs up. We're only at 500. And that'll still leave us a little bit short. Can y'all please click the thumbs up if you want to hear what I got to say. 
why did she mention her car was going after seeing the teen and not her son? Look, I don't know. I don't know. I'm confused about that as well. But here's what I want to say. Let me tell you guys this. I actually have a Ford Explorer that's a few years newer than theirs. So I can actually relate to the fact that when I told y'all that all of those Fords, especially the older ones, rely on a key. You stick the key in there. Why would the key be separated from the house key as far as the collective of keys and you left it in the uh, in the uh, in the cup holder like they said? First and foremost, matter of fact, I want y'all to think about this. I know times are hard out there. I know people are getting desperate. J just saying. Just saying. Who in the hell is out there stealing 2002 Ford Explorers? I didn't even know that those cars still worked. And the reason I say that is because the one that I got barely worked. And it's newer than theirs. <laughs> it took me, I think, about three months of taking it. When I, when I first got it, I think I bought it as it is. It looked like it was in great condition until I tried to drive the damn thing. Then come to find out it needed so much work. That thing was in the shop for almost a, a straight three months. I ran up my credit card trying to fix that damn thing. <laughs> it took me forever and now it works great. Why? Because that means I fixed every single thing that was possibly wrong. I fixed the damn the uh the the uh, fuel filter i fixed the fuel pump i fixed the fuel module i fixed the damn fuel rail i fixed the uh i put brand new tires brand new brakes brand new spark plugs brand new uh mass airflow sensor jesus christ like i can't tell you how much stuff i fixed on a ford explorer and i'm gonna tell you guys there's a bunch of people out there that will tell you Nobody wants to be the owner of a Ford Explorer. I had to learn the hard way and I found out why nobody wants a Ford Explorer. Huh? Let's think about this. They also just got this vehicle. Let me show you something right there. That, that's the photo I was getting ready to pull up right there. I want y'all to look at something. And guess I'm being hard on the parents because I believe something's not adding up. And no, I didn't fix all of that stuff myself. I took it to a shop and they charged me out the wazoo, which is why I'm trying to pay my credit card off to this day, right? <clears throat> look at that. It has a temporary tag on it, like a dealer tag. That means they just got it. Or you could also look at it and say, because I can't zoom in and tell. When does that temporary tag expire? Why does that matter? Because if you don't have the actual tag, it's never taken me more than what? A week? No, it, it don't even take me that long. I usually, when I get my vehicle, I'm like the next business day. I go down there and I'm like, boom, give me, give me my stuff. I pay tag title tax. I pay everything. Some big Thomas said that that tag been on there for four years. <laughs> why am I bringing this up? Why is this relevant? Here, here's why. Here's why I'm bringing it up. If you had to buy a 2002 Ford Explorer, like I told y'all, nobody wants a Ford Explorer, especially an old one. That means you had no choice but to get a 2002 Ford Explorer. Hello? Between the husband and the wife, the biological mother, biological fathers, when y'all put y'all two incomes together, the best you could do, and I'm not saying nothing's wrong with this. Hear me out. The best that two of y'all incomes could do together when y'all put y'all money together was buy a Ford Explorer, a 2002 used at that. How much do those things go for? 
oh, maybe about two grand at the most, depending on how many miles it got. And that one probably has, oh, about 295,000 miles on it. You couldn't afford plates and you couldn't afford a better afford exploder. Okay. So you couldn't afford a better afford afford. You couldn't afford. You get it? They couldn't get a better vehicle than a 2002. And if you couldn't, that's okay. I'm not clowning on nobody because I've been broke before. But why am I bringing up the fact that they might be broke? Because you couldn't afford tags. And what might a desperate person do? If you're broke, number one, you might have somebody steal your vehicle because if you bought it from the, from the, uh, from the dealer, then that means you have to provide insurance. And if you had insurance, like all of us should, right? I'm going to assume they were following the law. The law requires you to have insurance. So if you had insurance, some people might steal the vehicle to collect the insurance, right? It's possible. What else might you do if you're broke? We talk about babies for benefits all the time. It's possible that if you're broke and destitute, that you might go to drastic extremes to tell a story that might not be accurate about what happened to your son. And next thing you know, you're going to look up and I can guarantee y'all that in about 14 days, I'll give it a week. I think they're going to pop up with a GoFundMe. What y'all want to bet? They're already talking about having a vigil. They don't even know if the child is dead yet. They don't have the body. They don't have the kid. Why would you have a vigil for a kid that's not dead? I'm sorry. If I'm missing, don't have no vigil until y'all find a body. Huh? Who has a vigil for children who's not dead? Or you don't know? Or who's been, like if your child was missing for three months, six months, a year, I'm like, okay, have a vigil, fine. I get it. I understand. He ain't been missing that long, ma'am. They already have a GoFundMe. Somebody post the link. You lying. Email me the link. The AFC matters at gmail.com. If they have a GoFundMe, send me the link right now, please. I sincerely hope y'all are lying. We're doing this live. So y'all bear with me. My email address is open. I'm waiting on somebody to send me the GoFundMe. Is it far-fetched that this could be another GoFundMe means to collect money off of this kid? Like we say, hashtag babies for benefits, which is an AFC hashtag. Yes, it's possible. Especially if you're talking about a family of, of two adults that can't buy anything better and it's nothing wrong with that. But you couldn't afford the tags on a 2002 Ford Explorer. It don't cost that much. Do y'all know what your payments monthly would be on a vehicle that probably costs about 2000 bucks? What, 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 what would your payments be? How much would they charge you at a car dealership? <laughs> if they were charging you like some place to do $400 a month, how long would that take? Four, eight, 12, 16, five months. If they were charging you $400 a month. Think about this. What would that vehicle be worth to a criminal who would have stolen it, knowing how old that vehicle is. It is a beater. If a criminal is gonna steal something, don't you think that they would have at least a little bit of common sense to steal something that they'd at least be able to make either a little bit of money off of? Or if they had any intention of driving it, why would they ditch it and ditch it only a couple of miles away? from the house that they stole it from, but yet they took the baby. How does that make any sense? If y'all wanna know what I believe, 
Here's what I believe. Here's what I believe. I'm still waiting on somebody to email me, the AFC matters at gmail.com. If y'all find the GoFundMe for this story, don't send me any other GoFundMes except for this story. So if you don't have that, don't send it. Here's what I believe happened. Moral of the story. Then we'll move on to our next story. This baby is beat the hell up. Look at all the bruises on his face. I'll try to make it a little bit bigger. I think that's about like the biggest I can make this. I can clip a little bit off the top. Make it just a little bit bigger. I think that this baby was beat up and this baby was beat to death. And I think what they did was this baby was dead in the car. They panicked and they tried to figure out, well, what are we going to do? How are we going to hide this? And I think what they might have done was one of two things. Either the husband or the mom drove that car away, ditched the baby's body and ditched the vehicle and made up that, that, that story. Or they had somebody come steal the vehicle and go dump the body and act like this was some type of crime that happened to them. You took the older child in the house first, but why would you not take the, why would you, who leaves their baby in the car? If you're gonna take anything out the car first, why would you take groceries out of the car? Why would you take an older kid out of the car first and leave a baby inside of a car? You usually would take the baby inside first, especially if it's cold outside, and especially if all the baby has on is a damn tank top and some socks. Nothing about this makes any sense. I think that that boy is dead and I don't think that it was some random criminal that killed this baby. I'm putting that out there. This will all come out in the end and I hope that I'm wrong. I hope that I can retract some of my opinions, but remember, these are my opinions. These are not facts, but there are some things that I spoke on that were flat out facts. Don't get mad at me, I'm just the messenger and I'm just giving you guys a scenario until they give us some real answers. So we're waiting on the police, we're waiting on evidence and we're waiting to see what happens with the mom and dad. But like I said, that's what I personally believe as a scenario. So for now, we're just gonna say that this baby boy is missing and we hope that he's found alive. Thank y'all so much for listening to the story with an open mind, cause that's the most important part and for listening with an open heart. Because here, we believe in advocating for children. Babies' lives matter, and we want this baby boy to be found, okay? So keep him in your prayers. Let's go find him. Matter of fact, y'all can help find them by making sure that y'all share these stories, okay? How many of you guys are ready for our next story? I know I spent a lot of time on that one, but it was very, very important. I got a lot of good energy. I got to say thank you if she's still in the chat to Kim. Kim made another, another amazing donation. I got to look into the camera. Kim, if you're listening, sweetheart, thank you. Thank you so much for showing some love. I can never thank you enough. But, you know, if, if we could have a lot more people, like, uh, I guess, like give small amounts, so people don't have to give larger amounts and we could kind of spread it out. I believe we can make a huge impact. So instead of one person donating a large amount, if more people could donate smaller amounts that would equal that larger amount, then we all could do a lot more in the long run to support this channel and to support this content. But all of those links are in the description box. I always tell people, as long as you donate four quarters and above, it's good with me. Let's go to our next story. How many of you guys heard about, because a lot of y'all sent me this. How many of y'all heard about the baby that the mother and father hid inside of the walls? The walls of a house. How many of y'all heard about this story? Yes, you heard that right. 
They hid this baby inside of the walls of a house. They did this to a human baby. I hope y'all got y'all boxers and panties strapped on real good tonight. <laughs> a child, a human child hidden inside of the walls of a house. I know some of y'all be thinking these stories can't get any more stupid than what I've heard. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's about to get real, real stupid. What's up, Monica? I see you in there talking in, in Dutch all the time, and I appreciate that. I don't understand Dutch very well, but every once in a while, I'll respond to your comments in Dutch because <laughs> I, can, I can write some of it, but I damn sure can't speak it. But shout out to you. But I saw you in the chat. I thought I'd shout you out. Inside the walls. Who we are you guys ready for this? I see nobody sent me that GoFundMe, so they might not have had the correct GoFundMe. So I'm glad y'all waited on that. Let me see. Maybe you sent it to my spam. Nope. Okay. Okay, so y'all did. So I, I'm going to say it again. I think that I'm going to wait for about a week. And then I think they'll probably pop up with a GoFundMe. I can almost guarantee it. Help help us with, with funding for our, I don't know what they're going to fund because they don't have a body. They can't bury a baby with no body. So I don't know, but they're going to pop up with a GoFundMe. We still should be good. Let me make sure. Because they don't have a body. They can't bury a baby with no body. Okay, I'm going to raise this mic up. Sorry, I know that mic is a little bit loud. Sorry about that. I'm going to keep the mic about here. That should be a little bit better. Sorry. Y'all got to let me know if I'm a little bit too loud. Is this live? Yes, Sybil, we are live. Sybil Beard, channel member. Yes. <laughs> if you look at the thumbnail... I put live on the thumbnail of the picture of the uh, of the show, so that's one way you can tell. Second way is if you if you close the chat and look at the description uh, at the uh, description of the video, it should say we are live streaming, and it shows you how long we've been live. So yes, we are live. We are live. All right, here we go. Let's go to our next story. Kidnap, kidnap. Oh my goodness. Oh man, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, just when you think the stories can't get any wilder, you have a story like this and it's just incredibly odd. When you just think that these stories can't get any worse, you think that they can't get any worse. And then you hear a story where it's titled, and I got to give a shout out to Oxygen. Thank you for the article. And it says that a woman admits that she traveled with a dead infant baby and buried him behind the wall of a new home. Just that detail alone is just like you wonder, like, what is wrong with people? Like, like what's going on in people's minds? Like, what would make you think of this? Like, are you like, like, just you can't be this level of dumb. But let me tell you all the story. The mother's name is Kylie K-Y-L-I-E. L-I-E, we'll focus on that L-I-E, Wilt, W-I-L-T, initially told police that her infant son was in the care of someone named Claire in North Carolina. So she started this off with a lie, okay? 
A mother in Pennsylvania has admitted to traveling with her dead infant baby and burying his remains and the walls of her new home. This woman buried her baby inside the walls, inside the walls of her new home. I want y'all to notice in this story, if you hear about her going to go get help for her kid, calling 911 or something that normal human beings would do, what do you think to do? Hmm. I don't even know how, like, I don't even, I've never even seen a horror movie come up with something this, this sinister, this silly. <sighs> Kylie Wilt, let me see if I can get her face up on the screen. I know it's despicable, but that's the mother, Kylie Wilt. She's 25 years dumb, I mean old. And she is charged with obstruction of justice, welfare fraud, uh-huh. I want y'all to bookmark that. Welfare fraud, tampering with evidence, abuse of a corpse, and concealing the death of a child, according to a statement that was emailed to the news station from Washington County District Attorney Jason Walsh. Walsh stated that the Charleroi Regional Police and Child Youth Services responded to the home concerning the baby's whereabouts on November the 4th, which was only seven days ago from today. I'm sure there's somebody out there that's gonna say, oh, she was going through postpartum depression. That's why she buried her baby inside the walls of her new house, right? We got to always have those people in the comment section. She was suffering from mental illness, y'all. Y'all don't know what she was going through. She she was going through some difficult times in her life. And that's why she buried her baby inside the walls of a house that you would continue to smell a dead body throughout the house. Let's keep going. The mother confessed that she hid her one-year-old son's remains behind a bedroom wall a bedroom where she would be sleeping. Could you imagine the smell? Has anybody ever smelled a dead body before? Do y'all know what that smells like? Well, I'm going to tell y'all this. I might not know what a dead body smells like, but I've heard it's pretty bad. And I'm going to tell y'all, I used to have a route they used to drive me to a little bitty town by the name of Guyman, Oklahoma. I used to have to deliver supplies out there to a pig farm, P-I-G, pig farm. You could smell the dead pigs at least 30 miles, 20 to 30 miles before you even get to the town. That's how bad the smell was. And from what I've heard, human decay is pretty effing bad. We're not talking about a dead body in the woods. You're talking about a dead body in your bedroom where you go to sleep at. Sorry for yelling. But I don't understand that. Like these people come out of a freaking comic book. Stupid ass idiots. You can't blame this on anything except stupidity. They said the baby is here. The mother told authorities, according to a criminal complaint. The baby's father, by the name of Alan Hollis, 27 years old, over there looking like a fake-ass Matrix Neo, looking like a, a, a fake-ass, I forget my boy's name. Damn, what's my boy's name? Keanu Reeves. This is the broke Keanu Reeves on the right-hand side. 
That's a poor man's Keanu Reeves. Initially, the mother was not cooperating. She was not cooperating with the investigator and claimed that her son, who they didn't even give him a name, nor did they give us any pictures of the baby. So we have nothing to go on. And claimed that her infant son was in North Carolina with an individual identified only as somebody named Claire. Claire. The investigator contra contracted by Child and Youth Services notified the police when the lead did not pan out. The mother, Wilt, later told investigators that the boy died from SIDS, Sudden Infant Death Syndrome, back in February, and because she couldn't afford a proper funeral, she subsequently wrapped him in blankets, placed this baby's body in a gray plastic crate, and ended up burying this baby inside the walls of her house because she claimed that she couldn't afford a funeral. Now, anybody who's able to follow the story that I've given so far, and if y'all are listening, do me a favor and please click the thumbs up because I want more people to hear this story, okay? I want y'all to remember that they said that this is her new, new, new house. How can you afford a new house but can't afford a funeral of a baby who died of natural causes according to your own words? Does that make any sense? A cremation wouldn't cost you that much. Nobody said you had to have a $30,000 funeral with, 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 with a golden casket with diamonds, diamond encrusted casket and have, and have it down at the, at the most fanciest church you could find and pay and pay somebody like TD Jakes to come down there and, 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 and do the processional or whatever it's called. But I want y'all to remember that they said the mother was also arrested on welfare fraud. Bookmark that. We'll get back to all of that. We'll come back to it. <clears throat> Will and her family moved from Upper Crest Avenue to Lookout Avenue, taking the container with them in a U-Haul truck. Upon moving into the new home with their three children, oh my goodness. Three children. Three children. Well, I couldn't, I couldn't think of no white preachers. I'm sorry. I had to say T.D. Jakes. I couldn't think of no white ones. <laughs> some of y'all know some of those, some of those rich white, uh, what, what you, uh, eulogy. Thank you. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jamaica. But some of y'all know some of those uh some of those mega church pastors. Y'all gotta name me some. I don't I don't know the name of them off the top of my head. But anyway, she placed the crate behind her bedroom wall and sealed it with drywall and a fresh coat of paint. Interesting. So you don't have money for a funeral of a child that died from natural causes, according to your words, but you have money for drywall and paint? Really? Really? You got money for a new house, for new drywall and new paint, but no money for a funeral. Hmm. Interesting, quite interesting. <sighs> Let's keep going. Authorities found a gray plastic tote behind the wall. Of course, the tote was removed and I want to brace you. It's going to get bad. 
Upon opening the tote, there were two blankets on top and then a bed skirt. And at the bottom of the tote was a white garbage bag, according to the affidavit sent by the DA's office. Upon opening the garbage bag, they located the remains of a deceased child wrapped in two additional blankets. And I'm sure that probably smelled like the worst smell you ever want to smell. While interrogating the parents back at the station, the mother looked at her and her boyfriend or her husband, whatever he is, and said, I'm sorry, baby, I'm sorry. That's according to the affidavit. That's what her words were. The mother, excuse me, the boyfriend or, or the dad, whatever, admitted to authorities that Kylie had been receiving government benefits for the child since February. Where are my AFC people in the chat who love our hashtag, hashtag babies for benefits? Because it perfectly describes this story. They only had these children for the benefits that they could collect off of these children. They did not love these children. They did not care about these children. They were willing to hide the death of these children. And for all of these sins, these people need life in prison. And these children never, the ones that were living, never need to see their, their parents ever again because they're evil demons. They are evil demons. That's why we have the hashtag babies for benefits. I'm going to read it to you again. Why? The man told on her and said that she had been getting government benefits since February. So this heartless ass woman continued to collect a check off of her dead baby. So what were you doing with the money, ma'am? You didn't use it to pay for a funeral? No. Why would you be so scared to call 911 and tell them that you have a dead baby? Unless, unless it's a possibility that you might be held responsible for the death of your child. I don't know any parent, any good parent that would be more concerned about whether they're going to go to jail or not if your kid is dead, especially if you didn't do nothing wrong to your kid. That has nothing to do with age. A five-year-old could have figured out that this is wrong. Don't blame it on, oh, she was young, y'all. She was postpartum. Don't blame it on none of that. We need to stop giving people excuses for gross negligence of children. This is ridiculous. This is disgusting. Child and Youth Services had opened a case shortly after the birth of the child, according to the affidavit. So CPS was already involved. The caseworker informed the case was open with this family when the infant was born with THC in its system. So mama was having some THC, some weed, smoking while she was pregnant. And y'all know that smoking increases the risk of children having issues when they're born. Everybody should know that. They've been running commercials since I was a kid. Every human being on earth knows that. That mother shouldn't be smoking or drinking. Or, or, or am I wrong? Everybody should know that. That should be common knowledge. Or if it ain't common knowledge, maybe you shouldn't be getting pregnant. Maybe you shouldn't be a parent if you didn't know that. Over the course of a year, Kylie and the father refused to cooperate with CYS, claiming that the infant was not with them. So they've been lying this whole time. Matter of fact, just because they lied, that ought to automatically get them 25 years in prison, even if the child did die from SIDS. 
That should never be an excuse for you to damn lie and cover up and collect government benefits off of a dead kid. They said, I'm sick. It's a horrible feeling, according to, to former neighbor Robin, who told the news, I used to hear the baby crying all the time. And all of a sudden, I didn't hear the baby one day. She notified the property manager at Wilt's former residence. I told her I had not seen the baby and I was concerned. She said the baby passed away and I was thinking, I'm here all the time. I never saw an ambulance. Wouldn't you call 911 if the baby wasn't responding to you? Right. The infant's cause of death has yet to be determined and we're going to wait and hear when they do their investigation because we'll give you a cause of death. So we will do an update on this story. The, uh, the mother's sister told the news by way of social media that she was unaware of the baby's disappearance and that Hollis kept Willis from her family. Now they're going to try to blame it on the dad. <coughs> Kylie Will and Alice Hollis remain in custody and a date for a preliminary hearing has yet to be scheduled. Let me give you guys the fair usage. Here we go. Let's get it. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. Yeah, that's what we do. Let's take myself off the screen. Let's get it. Good afternoon and thanks for watching. I'm Lindsay Ward and we begin with some disturbing breaking news out of Washington County. A Charleroi mother is in jail after police found a baby's body hidden in a home. Kylie Wilt is charged with concealing the baby's death and abuse of a corpse. Police say she told officers the baby died back in February from SIDS and she didn't have money for a burial. She told officers that she put the baby's body in a crate and then in a space in the wall. She covered it up with drywall and new paint. The baby's father, Alan Hollis, also faces an obstruction charge. He told police Wilt continued to get food stamps based on the child being alive. This one of God's children, she plastered up in that row. She's gonna have to answer to God. Neighbors are reacting to a disturbing discovery at a local home tonight. Two parents in custody accused of hiding their baby's body in a bedroom wall. Police believe the child died back in February. And tonight they're trying to figure out how and why this happened. Here's Amy Wattis with the latest. The baby's mom is locked up here at the Washington County Jail. Dad is at SCI Green. A former neighbor of theirs tells me she used to hear the baby crying all the time. Then all of a sudden, she didn't hear those cries anymore. I'm, I'm sick. It's a horrible feeling. Robin Stasha used to live right next door to 25-year-old Kylie Wilt and 27-year-old Alan Hollis on Upper Crest Avenue in Charleroi until she says they moved about a month ago. She says she knew the couple had a baby. I used to hear the baby crying all the time and all of a sudden I just didn't one day and didn't see them bringing him in and out and didn't figure this is what happened. So she asked the property manager about the baby. I told her that I haven't seen the baby and I was concerned and she said they told her that the baby had passed away. I'm here mostly all the time. I come and go, but I've never seen an ambulance. So automatically you would call 911, you would call an ambulance or something if your baby wasn't responding to you. On Thursday, investigators showed up at this house on Lookout Avenue in Charleroi to help CYS, who was looking for the child. Found out that this child obviously was... Uh... Um, placed in a, it's a wall, the inside of a wall, and it was plastered over and drywalled over by the uh, statements made by mom. Wilt told police the baby died back in February from SIDS at their other home on Upper Crest and didn't have money to bury him. She says she wrapped the baby, believed to be around six months old at the time, in blankets, placed him in a crate, and kept him in the laundry room. Once they moved to their current home on Lookout, she told investigators she put the crate with the baby in it in the wall in her bedroom. There was discoloration, a different color of paint, 
Uh, obviously, it, w it looked like the drywall was cut out and the section was replaced uh, in a bedroom. Now, Robin Stasha is thinking about what she could have done to help. Which I could have got there before this happened. Wilt's sister told me over Facebook she had no idea the baby was missing. She claims Hollis was abusive to her sister and he kept her isolated from their family. Investigators tell me CYS has been working with this couple since the baby was born because doctors found THC in his system at birth. The DA believes three other children also live with the couple. It's unclear where they are at this time. As for both Wilt and Hollis, they are facing multiple charges. Reporting in Washington County, Amy Wattis, KDK News. A 25-year-old from Charleroi is charged with concealing the death of her child. Child and Youth Services say they found out Kylie Wilt had been lying about the location of her one-year-old. They called police to search the home on Lookout Avenue and found out the child died in February and was placed in a crate. When Wilt moved to Lookout Avenue, she placed the crate inside her bedroom wall, then covered it with drywall and new paint. Police were able to find the child's remains, but they're still trying to determine how the one-year-old died. Katie Johnston for CBSN Pittsburgh. Hi, everybody. Amy Wattis with KDKA. We have a disturbing story we are working on today here in Charleroi, Washington County. We're on Upper Crest, and this duplex you see behind me, 1005, is where a couple lived. Neighbors say that the couple that is in jail right now for um, allegedly having their baby in a wall after passing away back in February. They're the ones in jail. They lived here before they moved to another street in Charleroi. And um, the neighbors tell me that they heard the baby crying, but then all of a sudden they didn't hear crying anymore and didn't really know what happened. And they're obviously disturbed by the news of hearing that this young baby was found in a wall with, pla with a drywall over it. Uh, a few streets over. So we're working on this story. We'll have much more for you coming up on KDKA. Let me give you guys my closing thoughts. To me, this story is very simple and it follows my belief that they only have these children for the benefits that they could collect off of these children. And we call that hashtag babies for benefits. This mother only had these children to collect benefits off of these off of these kids and now the family is trying to claim that she was under some type of duress like i don't like that i don't like that they both participated in this they're grown adults they are both disgusting together they need to suffer together in the criminal system absolutely disgusting and the fact that there there is there is no level of somebody coercing you forcing you to take your dead child and bury it inside of a wall and then this kid has been dead since february march april may june july august september october eight months and you didn't say anything and you kept collecting a check that alone because they're also getting her for welfare fraud that alone should get you at least 25 years if we believe that the child died from natural causes i still believe there needs to be a high penalty for this level of stupidity this woman is young enough that if you don't give her enough years in prison, she could get out of prison and have more kids and abuse more kids. 25 years with her being 20 something years old, that'll put her just above the threshold of being able to properly have children. That'll put her in the high risk. And matter of fact, these type of people need to be castrated. They shouldn't even be able to, to have their, their, their reproductive rights should be taken from them. They shouldn't be able to have kids. They shouldn't be around kids. They they shouldn't be in our society. They are a danger. And matter of fact, we need to get some counseling for the other children that are living. They need a hell of a lot of help in their life. Okay? So let's pray for those other children. 
R.I.P. to the baby. We don't have a picture. We don't have a name. We barely even got an age. But R.I.P. to that young soul that could have grown up to become something special. But we will never, ever know because that kid had stupid parents. As stupid is, as stupid thugs. These thugs and these criminals need to be out of our society, out of our hair, 25 years minimum. Give it to them. They've earned it. Thank you guys for listening with an open mind as well as an open heart. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Don't forget to leave a comment, okay? Thank you. Because believe me when I tell you, you said his name is Archer. How did you find that? I couldn't find his name anywhere. How do you know that? Thank you, JLK. But how do you know that though? Tell me how you know that. I'm just curious. Because I know, but that's that's why we have a live chat because we're all able to help each other. I had no idea what that kid's name was because I couldn't find it anywhere. And I looked up maybe about 10 articles, maybe about 11 or 12, but about 10 for sure. You're local. Okay, thank you. So we could put that in the chat. R.I.P. Archer. It would have been nice to know what he looked like. And, it would, and it's at least nice to know that he has a name. So thank you. Shout out JLK in the building. You have a picture? Can you send it to me? My email is the AFC matters at gmail. Uh oh, gmail.com. If you can email it to me, because that's why, look, we're a community, and, and look, and the reason why I can post the picture is because this kid is no longer in danger. This kid has passed away. This kid will be in no further danger. This kid been, matter of fact, the kid been dead for, for eight months, minimum. I like the name too, Archer. I do like the name. So we'll put some respect on baby Archer's name. If you get a chance to send me that picture, JLK, since you're local, that would be awesome. I'll pull it up and show them before I start my next story. If you could, uh, if you could go ahead and send that to me, just let me know when you send the email and I'll, and I'll put it up. Uh, guys, I actually have one more story, but I could do two more if y'all want me to stay. So y'all let me know what you want to do. Uh, who got, who got timed out? Who got timed out? I just got an email. Somebody said it got timed out. Who got timed out? There was one person that got timed out earlier. I thought it was actually justified, but I've only seen one person get timed out. Did somebody get timed out? And shouldn't it be a Cause I'm look, I'll be honest with you. I saw a little bit time somebody out earlier. And I gotta say it was a it was a good timeout. Cause I saw I went back and looked at what the person wrote, and the person was on an extreme level of disrespect, and you didn't even get blocked, you just got timed out. I've already talked to my moderators, so I think all of my moderators already understand what I expect. And, I, and I'm telling you, I, I know you did a little bit, but I'm telling you, I went back and looked at it and I saw what they wrote and I didn't like what they wrote. I thought it was a justified timeout. It was something along the lines of, of good, like one less, one less child or something like that. I didn't like that at all. We are here as advocates for children. That was a justified timeout. We don't disrespect children here. Everybody get that? It's one thing if we say something to each other, it's a whole nother thing when you disrespect a child. And it wasn't even a block, it was just a timeout. I'm, I'm gonna ask him and see what your chat name is because if this is the same person, I'm not sure if this is you or somebody different. But if you ask me, I only saw one person that got timed out. 
Are y'all ready to move on with the story? We need to talk about this New York father. I'm from New York, New York. We got a New York father to talk about here. We got a super chat from Sheila Johnson said, thank you. Sheila Johnson showing some love. If you're listening, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Showing some love, sending a $10 super chat, showing some love. I'm telling you, I saw the timeout. You don't sit there and say, good, one less, one less, de- uh, a, a child dead, one less child. That's a good thing. That's not a good thing. And that's not a cool thing to say at all. If we're talking about criminals, I try not to, to talk about people who are innocent and have done nothing wrong. I do, however, if somebody has hurt, murdered, or abused a child, yes, I will crack jokes. Or I will say some harsh things about people who I believe have done something wrong. Every once in a while, I might make an observation in a news video, but I try not to do that often because I know that's it's not the nicest thing in the world to do. But to say a kid should be dead, not cool. Not cool at all. You sent two pictures, I got you. Oh, he is a beautiful baby boy. Do y'all want to see the picture of the of the last baby? Y'all want to see Archer? Beautiful baby boy. Look at Archer. Look at that. Y'all see baby Archer? Thank you, beautiful baby. Let me see, Let me. you sent me another one? I don't know who these other kids are. I'm a, I'm a hide the other kids because I don't know who those other kids are. But I can show baby Archer, look at him. Beautiful baby. Y'all can see him? If y'all can, put that in the chat. R.I.P. Archer. Beautiful baby. Look at him. Thank you, JLK. I will put that as the, uh, the thumbnail and we'll add him so we'll have his picture. Thank you for doing that. That is a beautiful baby boy. Sad, man. That's very sad. We couldn't even do that baby the the respect of calling 911. Hey, my baby has passed away and just go from there. Sudden, Sudden infant death syndrome happens. It happens. There's nothing you can do if a baby dies of natural causes, but you don't turn around and hide the death and then keep collecting benefits like you can't be that level of broke. Anyway, let's talk about this story and then I'll check your email, six girl. I'll check your email here in just, oh, well, never mind. I can check it now. Hold on. In that first story, they're trying to say that, that the family put up a GoFundMe. Tanithia Miller. Let me ask you this, six girl. How are you relating this to um to that story? Like, what makes you think that those GoFundMe's are related? Everybody, please go help my little brother. We're raising money <clears throat> for his Miami trip for his football game. Okay, okay, I think that's different. He said, my little brother, um, six girl, I don't think those are related. I don't think those are related. I think those GoFundMe's are are different. That's a a GoFundMe for a different person for a totally different reason. I don't think that's related to the death of this kid or, or the disappearance of this kid, I should say.
Yeah. Based on what you said, based on what you said, me, and I appreciate that. I don't think it's related. I don't think it's related. So hopefully you understand. I, I, I appreciate your help, but I, I honestly just looking at it, I don't, I don't think it's related. Out of, out of all, out of all due respect. All right. If y'all got time, we've had a number of people donate. Let me say thank you to. Uh oh. Sorry, I missed a couple of y'all donations. If y'all are still in the chat. If you donated in Cash App or PayPal, I'm about to read it right now. Let me go to my main screen because we, we're not ready for the story yet. I got your message. Okay, I got you. Real quick, let me say thank you. Oh, I'm gonna have to get off this website. They uh, they want to play videos automatically. Thank you, Brandy. Brandy, where you at? Brandy, if you're in the chat, Brandy Kendall, thank you for your cash app. If you're listening, thank you. That's the grandma and was on her was on her and Deanna Bray page. I feel you. I feel you. <sighs> big timer, big timer. Are you in the chat? Uh oh, let me make sure I can say. Big timer 24. If you're still in the chat, big bro, I, if you're listening, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Dre the Dream. Thank you, bro. I got your cash out. Dre the Dream. I think he's still here. Let me make sure I can say your name. Christy, Christy, Christy in Cash App. Say, appreciate you, Jay. Opening people's eyes and minds. Thank you. Kim, Kim is in the chat. I think Kim is still here. Kim, if you're listening, you already know. Thank you. Thank you tremendously. Thank you so much. To Carolera, Carolera C. May the Lord continue to bless you. Thank you for your Cash App. Little bit in the chat, moderator. If you're listening, thank you very much for your cash app. To Shelly, Shelly with an O, thank you. Tammy Smith, if you're listening, thank you. To Tara, Tara D, if Tara's still up, thank you. I know I know it's late at night. Dominique Holmes, thank you. And I think that's everybody so far. Okay. I need to get off this website because they're going to continue to keep playing videos. Uh oh, did I bring up, is this the right story? Nope, that's not the right story. Hold on, hold on, that's not the right one. Oh, right here, okay, it was my first story. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about this little boy and this is out of New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, this story comes out of New York. A New York woman has been charged with second degree murder accused of locking her boyfriend's seven-year-old son in a closet and starving him to death. So first and foremost, let me thank you guys for even being here to hear this baby boy story. I'm going to tell you guys, I'm going to give you some details that are very sensitive and it might not sit well with your sensibilities, sensibilities, especially when I give my opinion about the story. So I urge you guys, if you can't handle that, that's your disclaimer if you don't want to be here, okay? but she's been charged with second degree murder. Police say that Leticia Bravo, who is 39 years old, let me see if I have a picture of this demon right here. And I know that's a watermark on the top of her face, but you can still see past that and she looks like an evil, evil witch. She looked like the evil wicked witch of the Midwest, even though that wasn't a witch on Wizard of Oz, but she still looks like it. 39 years old of New Burr. New Burr locked boyfriend Arturo Kaka's son, Peter, in a room. That's little Peter right there, and Peter is seven years old. 
His full name is Peter. It's a little hard to pronounce his name. I'm going to try my best. Quacus. Quacus, if I'm not mistaken. I think that's how you pronounce his name. So in February, Bravo brought Peter to St. Luke Hospital where he was pronounced dead from malnutrition. I don't understand how you can look at this baby and starve him to death. Why would you do that? I don't understand why a person and how a person can look at a child that innocent, that cool, that nice. This happy kid, why would you starve him? That's probably one of the, the greatest sins you could do is to starve a child. That is a horrible, horrible thing to do. Y'all give me just a second. Taking a note. In February, he was brought to the hospital where he was pronounced dead from malnutrition. He was starved to death. Bravo was named his primary caretaker in September of 2020. Also is believed to be Peter's biological mother, but that has not been confirmed. An autopsy conducted by the Orange County Medical Examiner concluded that Peter who weighed 37 pounds at age seven. You don't even have to know the, the correct weight category, but you know that, that that don't even sound right. That's That happened over a prolonged amount of time. Seven years old, 37 pounds. And he had died of malnutrition. It's alleged that Bravo left Peter locked and secluded in a bedroom behind doors, locked from the outside since January of 2021. Peter was in Bravo's care every day except Saturday, which is because which is which he spent with Quacus. The boy also repeatedly stopped logging on to school online. Uh, logging on to school online beginning in January, even after Bravo was contacted by members of the district. So they realized that something was wrong. He was brought into the hospital a month later on February the 10th. It's unthinkable that, that someone would accept the responsibility of caring for a child and then deny that child the basic necessities of life. And I 100% agree. Thank you. According to district attorney, David Hover. It's truly disturbing how this child was kept hidden from the school authorities before he died. Bravo was arrested on Thursday. Give me a moment. My article keeps disappearing. Sorry. Hold on just a moment. These websites be more worried about loading their damn ads and I can't even read the damn article. Bravo was arrested on Thursday by the city of Newburgh police department and charged with second degree murder, first degree manslaughter and second degree manslaughter. Her bail was set at $250,000 cash. If convicted on these charges, she may face a 25 year sentence. Quakas also was charged with criminal criminally negligent homicide for not allegedly knowing or excuse me for not acknowledging his son's malnutrition and poor health, which led to a four year sentence. He knew something and he should have been charged equally. Four years, 
for knowing that his son was being killed. Both of them were held in the Orange County Jail and are due to appear in court on October 26th. Let me give you guys the fair usage. That just makes no sense. And I think that's the only picture I have of the dad. I don't know why he didn't have a mugshot that I was able to find. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. They should get equal amount of time in prison. That's ridiculous. The starvation death of a seven-year-old boy in Newburgh leads to murder charges. And now, and I just thought about something. If you starve a child, you know the child is going to die. Right? How was that not premeditated? How was that not first-degree murder? And you're also are doing this in the act of committing another crime, which is child abuse. That should be first degree murder. Life in prison on both of them. The starvation death of a seven-year-old boy in Newburgh leads to murder charges and now a likely inquiry into why the system decided, designed to protect him apparently failed him. CBS 2's Tony Aiello reports. He weighed just 37 pounds when he died February 10th. The Orange County DA says in an apartment on William Street in Newburgh, Peter Kouakwis was locked in a room, denied food, and starved to death. His main caregiver, Felicia Bravo, is charged, along with her boyfriend, the boy's father. The cruelty allegedly began in January, when the boy stopped joining remote learning classes at his school. Peter was in a second grade special education class. CBS2 has confirmed an inquiry will review how the district handled his absences, whether warning signs were mishandled or missed, and if the pandemic complicated efforts to safeguard the boy. Newburgh police say there was concern about Peter here at Temple Hill Academy and why he was not participating in remote learning. Police Commissioner Jose Gomez spoke on Friday. Peter no, never logged into virtual school despite numerous conversations between Bravo and Peter, teachers and all his representatives. Residents are anxious to learn what action schools took to check on Peter's welfare as he allegedly starved to death at Bravo's home. Uh, justice needs to be served for him. Uh, it's just so sad what happened. It's, it's, it's inexcusable. Somebody should be held liable for that. State lawmakers also following the case. A spokeswoman telling me Senator James Scoofus, quote, feels very strongly anybody involved in this child's death needs to be held accountable. If it happens to include school officials, so be it. The district promised in February to provide information to those investigating this tragic death. Tony Aiello, CBS 2 News. News that we are following very closely is some disturbing details in the death of a seven-year-old boy who starved to death back in February. And today, police announced charges against two people. CBS 2's Dave Carlin has more. Seven-year-old Peter Quick has died of starvation and neglect, said investigators, announcing second-degree murder charges for 39-year-old Letitia Bravo, believed to be the boy's mother. She is now behind bars when she brought the boy from the Newburgh apartment they shared to a hospital on February 10th. He was lifeless and shockingly small, said Orange County District Attorney David Hoover. He weighed 37 pounds and he was seven years old. I don't think there needs to be much more said than that. He said the medical examiner's findings led them not only to Bravo, who had primary custody of the boy, but also his father, Arturo Cuecas, who lived elsewhere and had the boy with him every Saturday. The father is charged with criminally negligent homicide. Investigators say he should have intervened. Some members of Newburgh's community held a series of vigils here on William Street, demanding justice for the boy. It's hard to see a kid be treated like that. It's too close to home. It's sad. He used to play at the bus stop all the time before the corona came. 
The investigation found the boy was allegedly an abused prisoner in his own home. It is alleged that Bravo kept Peter locked and secreted in a bedroom behind door, locked from the outside since January 2021. The boy had not logged into his classes, but when asked if there was an alarming lack of follow-up by Newburgh schools, the district attorney had this response. Something definitely has to be looked at by both my office and, and internally in the city of Newburgh. But again, we have seen time and time again that during COVID, um, it was a learning experience for everybody. Today's justice for him. Sometimes it takes a little time. The next court date for the defendants is October 26th in Orange County Court. In Newburgh, Dave Carlin, CBS2 News. <clears throat> Again, if you ask me, the dad is just as culpable for knowing that this was happening to his son, allowing it to happen, but to sit there and just dump the blame all on his girlfriend or the mom or whatever she was. I just don't, because y'all know I'm a fair person, and that, I just don't think that's right. I think they should be held equally responsible for this. They both should get life in prison, and this should be premeditated. I think to the letter of the law, from my understanding, and maybe the law in this area might be a little bit different in New York, but I thought that first-degree murder is premeditated. If you starve a child... It's going to die. You knew it was going to die. You allowed it to happen. You participated in letting it be. The child died. Maybe some legal experts or maybe somebody who understands New York law a little bit better than me maybe can tell me. But that sounds like first degree murder to me. A among other things. He should get... They both should get first degree, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth degree murder. Life in prison is not good enough. And people like this deserve a special place in hell. They shouldn't be parents. They shouldn't be on our society. They shouldn't be procreating. They need to be out of our society and charged to the fullest extent of the law. This is by far one of the most disgusting things. But damn, it seems like I say that all the time. Because we always are finding so many children that are being starved. And this is just so, so sad. Today, young baby, Peter, he was only seven years old at 37 pounds. Y'all know that's, that's, that's just not right. And he seemed to be a happy baby boy. And he was robbed of an opportunity to grow up and become something great. Peter, young prince, R.I.P. Thank y'all for listening to this story. The only other thing we might update is how many years they actually get in prison at the conclusion. Thank y'all for listening. You see, I'm just like you. Born and raised right here in Oklahoma City, an Oklahoma City public school product, and a former Division I college basketball player. As a husband and a father, I know exactly what it feels like to make that daily living, make that daily grind to support your family. My experience in corporate finance and as a college professor has taught me one thing, and that we make it to be what we want it to be. Can you imagine a city government with no limitations, catering to access to resources and tools for people who look just like you? Who says we can't end homelessness with creative solutions? Who says we can't have a citywide mentoring program that will cater to all youth in Oklahoma City that will put them on a path to be successful? Who says that the criminal justice system can't be equitable and cater to all walks of life, no matter your income or your position as a family? And as your Oklahoma City mayor, I will put people over politics. My name is Jimmy Lawson, and I look forward to having your vote on February the 8th, 2022. For more information about my campaign and how to make a campaign contribution, please visit www.lawsonforokc.com. See you at the polls. Check out this wonderful organization that I'm proud to be a part of. It's called Bags for Kids, B-A-G-S 
number four, KIDS.org. And check out the website. They really help a lot of uh, kids in foster care, uh, giving them a permanent piece of luggage and also a lot of items that they might need so that they feel that they're belong, which they do. So go to the website, bagsforkids.org. So go for it. It's a great place and uh, they're doing great work. Exclusive new products that you will only see on my website at www.sayitwithchess.com. These products are made special by my mother, Keyline Design. The hoodie blankie, the face mask, as well as the four-in-one African head wrap. Now, the way it works, it is a reversible bonnet. It has a headband that you can wear alone. It has a matching face mask as well. Please be sure to go over to our website and check out these nice new products that you will not find anywhere else. What's going on guys? This your boy, DJ Just J with Just Down TNT, and I am your humble host of the AFC Podcast. And people ask me all the time, what is the AFC Podcast? This is a platform for us to have open and candid conversations about children who are being taken advantage of by people who are in charge of protecting them. So sometimes we discuss the latest things going on in the news, but we advocate for children first. I get so many emails and comments from people that love what I do, and I want to continue to keep bringing content that matters to YouTube. And I would like to thank you in advance for your consideration to contributing to my platform. You can help support this channel by way of the links that are in the description box of each and every video. And also, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I would like to thank you again and welcome to the AFC podcast where we advocate for children first. We'll see you guys on the next stream. Peace.